163 Radnor Street, Manchester, doesn't exist anymore, and these two horses certainly don't answer to the names of Lily and Olga Barton. And if Harry Porter is alive and well, he's not in this Ballam funeral parlour. In Cecil Street, Manchester, there's just a gap in the wall where the Angoys and Barkers should be. A couple of peculiar coincidences surround the Barkers, the Angoys, the Bartons and Mr. Harry Porter. First, they're all registered to vote in a general election next Monday. And second, none of them seem to exist. Tonight, World in Action sets out on the trail of the vanishing voters. The Barkers, the Angoys, the Bartons and Mr. Harry Porter are apparently fictitious characters in a bizarre exercise which could affect the outcome of a South American election. The former British colony of Guyana is perched on the shoulder of South America. Next Monday, it holds its first independent election, an election of international importance. The strong opposition is led by a Marxist, and if he won, America could have another Cuba on her doorstep. Right. Enemy! Right! Guyana has a bitter past. Nearly 200 people died in a violent struggle between the parties before independence. There are two main racial groups. Guyanese of African origin are concentrated in the towns and dominate the police, army and civil service. Most of them will vote for the existing largely Negro government. But the majority of Guyanese are of Indian origin. Their ancestors were shipped from India to labor in the sugar fields. They're likely to vote massively for the opposition and its Indian Marxist leader. To win, the government needs every vote it can lay its hands on, and it's taking no chances. A thousand troops patrolled the plantations when Indian sugar workers went on strike last month. All the old bitterness between Indian and Negro, between left and right, still simmers. But we did find one floating voter in the cane fields. So who are you going to vote for in this election? Well, as for now, I can't say yet. Because I did not consider my mind yet who who I'm going to vote for. But later on, and I'll see whoever my mind choose to vote for. Forbes Burnham has been Prime Minister of Guyana since 1964. He leads the ruling People's National Congress Party. No, you can't vote PPP because you can't vote for terrorism that I talked about yesterday. You can't vote for UF because But the receptions are less enthusiastic when the Prime Minister is not among his own people. Now, one last strike. Hip, hip, hip. All right, you find your best. And therefore, you will get the holiday tomorrow. Thank you very much. Marxist Chedi Jagan leads the People's Progressive Party. He was once Premier, but agents of the American CIA secretly financed a general strike to bring him down. This is no time for us to be divided. Guyana, unfortunately, has too many races and too many religions, which is a hunting ground for the sharks. But there are only two classes, the exploiters and the exploited, the capitalists and the workers. Big businessman Peter Dagar is leader of the third party, the right-wing United Force. Two months ago, he broke his party's coalition with Burnham. I joined the coalition now, he campaigns among the Amerindians of the interior. This time, I would not join any coalition except on these terms. And these terms are that the land question be settled before that the rights of the Amerindians to their land be granted. And I think communism can be defeated fairly in Guyana, as it has been in the past. And I'm all for a fair, honest election, and we're not getting it, and it augurs very ill for the future. I think we had a bill called a Representation of the People's Bill, which had better been called a bill to rig the elections in favor of the ruling party. Georgetown, capital of Guyana. This is the center where the government compiled the disputed registers of voters. 300,000 people in Guyana have now been photographed, registered, and deemed eligible to vote by this office. And despite opposition protests, the office has also registered 67,000 voters outside Guyana for the first time. 
These overseas voters don't have to be photographed. They make up no less than one-sixth of the total electorate. The office staff are overwhelmingly drawn from the pro-government Negro bloc. We asked Chief Elections Officer Reg Butler why. It is a normal thing. It happened with the last government when they were preparing the, preparing the, the registers. They have to see to that they put the persons in to look after their own interests. I mean, they wouldn't like to know that they have put in anybody who would um, well, embarrass them anyway. But this is a normal thing, that they do appoint persons who they can trust and can carry out their functions. Lancelot Ferreira is Commissioner of Registration. His office approved the overseas list. Well, how many did you find about in London? About 38,000. And outside London? By the remaining 7,000. World in Action did its own arithmetic. Mr. Ferreira's final lists name 43,423 Guyanese voters in Britain. We checked British census and immigration statistics, but could not find many more than 20,000. There are certainly not 43,423 Guyanese voters. I asked to see a number of registration cards of cases which looked odd to me in looking over the revised voters list for overseas. And in examining uh, the cards that I asked for, uh, it, was it was very clear, there's no doubt, that these were forged cards. Janet Jagan is the wife of the opposition leader, Chetty Jagan, and secretary of his party. A William Hockley and a Florence Hockley living at one address, and then a William Hockley and a Florence Hockley at another address, all four having separate registration numbers and each entitled to a ballot. I found that all four, when you examine them together, uh, bore similar signatures. So, in fact, the four uh, were manufactured. Back in London, we checked both the Hockley addresses listed. No, I've never heard of William Hockley or Florence Hockley. My family's lived here for 15 years. No. They don't live here? No. How long have you been living here? Um, about a year and six months. About a year and six months? Uh-huh. Okay. What's your name? What's your name? Mrs. Backus. Mrs. Backus. I see. You're quite sure they don't live here? Do, they, do you know of anyone of that name living near here? No. They don't live next door? No. Intrigued by the inconsistencies in the overseas voting list, World in Action set out to test its accuracy. Two dozen researchers checked a random sample of 550 listed addresses of voters in London. The result was startling. No. How long have you lived here yourself? Over 25 years. No, we haven't got any Mr. Dalton here, never. Never heard of him. How long have you been here? I live here 10 years now. Are you absolutely sure that the number of Guyanese living in Great Britain is correct? The figure you have given is correct. I feel the figure is correct. You're 100% sure about this? Well, I feel it's correct because there are quite a lot of Guyanese who are living here from a very long way back. No, Mr. John Collins has never lived here. I've lived here for 30 years. I've never heard of him. No, not as far as I know, because we've lived here nine years and nobody by that name has ever lived here. But you still are 100% sure that the figures on the foreign lists are correct? Yes. You have no doubt at all? I have no doubt at all. I see. I've got on my list a Barbara Curtis, who gives this address as her address. I've never heard of a woman of that name. How long have you been here? About 15 years. Anyone live upstairs? No, nobody. Jamie Battery. Bentley. No, I've never heard of him. I see. How long have you been living here? Well, 15 years now. Are you sure? James Bentley. Unless I don't know the name at all. I see. I've got a fellow here from Salon. Do you think that any of your agents registered anyone at all without their actually producing a passport. I cannot say that for certain because I'm not living abroad, but I will feel that they will carry the instructions as I given them in the correct manner. In fact, nearly half the 550 addresses we visited had never heard of the Guyanese voters who should have been there. And our researchers found even more extraordinary examples. In London's East End, voters Yearwood, Howard and Ned should have been living at 16, 20 and 22 Rendlesham Road. Demolition began here a year ago and a school is being built on the site. 14 Homer Road, 15 and 16. More voters should live here, but the three houses were cancelled padlock two years ago. Examples like this cropped up all over London. Using the A to Z street guide, 
we set off for South London to find 15 Vant Road, Tooting. We found numbers 19 and 17, but there was an old established builder's yard where number 15 and Miss Gladys Cooper should have been. We checked the correctness of the addresses to ensure that if an address has been given, it actually exists. That's the reason for checking the A to Z. If someone says that where he resides at a particular lot, in a particular street, a particular address, we check the address to ensure it well that exists. Are you sure that all the addresses exist? Well, I actually didn't do the checking myself, but my staff did it. And I have confidence in them and felt that they've done a good job. And it is also unlikely that Gladys Foster ever lived at 32 Arvon Road, Islington. The houses here made way for the railway in 1874. You feel there are absolutely no flaws? Where I'm concerned, there's none. There are no flaws at all. Because everything is done in accordance with the regulation, or in accordance with an act, or, or legislation, which was passed by the House of Assembly, with both sides present. And um, so long as it is passed, I'm just merely carrying out the functions or the requirements of that particular legislation, which was discussed by the government. The conclusions of our London survey were emphatic. Most of the overseas voters on the Guyanese electoral list were not at the addresses given. 75 of the houses were derelict or non-existent. In fact, of the 550 names we checked in London, little more than 100 were genuine Guyanese voters. For conclusive proof, we sent out researchers in Manchester. They soon found the proof we needed. Cecil Street, Manchester. Here, there should be 60 Guyanese voters. We looked very hard, but we couldn't find a single one. And where Radnor Street, Pinder Street, and 30 Guyanese were supposed to be, only a pub survived the bulldozers. In Manchester, we checked 350 addresses, one house in every six listed. 50%, a full half of these houses didn't even exist. We found only one genuine voter for every 20 listed. Our total survey in London and Manchester proves beyond doubt that the list of overseas voters in the Guyana election is a massive fabrication. When the British left Guyana in 1966, a special election commission was set up to supervise voting and guard against corruption. But in recent months, the Burnham government has whittled away the Commission's power. Although the three major parties each appoint a member, the chairman also has a vote and the election commission is now deadlocked. The chairman, Sir Donald Jackson, is a former High Court judge. It is not for me to inquire, and in point of fact, I do not go about looking for faults. I see, try to find out the best in everyone so that I may improve my own imperfections. Well, I would start out. I would start out by presuming that they are correct. And if information comes to me, which I am sure about, that there is something wrong, and it has been proved to me, then I will say, oh, I'm so very sorry that this is so. I never expected this. But I don't start out by presuming that a person would perform his act uh, without impartiality or without good judgment. I don't assume that at all. Otherwise, one would um, get to wrong conclusions. With this government, the poor class of people get poorer, and the rich class of people get richer. In the rice fields around Georgetown, the Indian peasants are frustrated and angry. Hard, hard look at very hard. Look, all these walking in the mud, and we haven't seen anything at all. Some of us hardly get into getting food. A lot of people suffering bad. Walking from seven to seven in the mud, day and night. In the peasant villages, Cherry Jagan's orators are whipping up indignation. That in so far as people overseas are going to have a preponderating voice. This government, the poorer class of people get poorer, 
and the rich class of people get richer. In the rice fields around Georgetown, the Indian peasants are frustrated and angry. Hard, hard look up, very hard look, all these walking in the mud, and we haven't seen anything at all. Some of us hardly get into getting food. A lot of people suffering bad, walking from seven to seven in the mud, day and night. In the peasant villages, Cherry Jagan's orators are whipping up indignation. That in so far as people overseas are going to have a preponderating voice in the choice of candidates at the next election, the people of Guyana must be fighting for the electoral suffrage all over again. They had no right to vote in this country. Well, we here in this country suffering. A day out of the way, they're making their money that side, and we in this country punishing. So they see why they, could, they should vote from that side to this country. We don't vote for them. Why they vote for we? You see? I don't see why there is such thing like that. They have no interest in this country. Why they vote from there to here? We, the people live here, we, we see what happened here. We know why the problem for we. It's we not fair to me for is. one reason, because the people are outside it. I don't see what kind of interest they got in this country that they must vote for this country, and they got no interest in this country. We, the people who live in the country, we must vote for the country, not them people outside. Well, the whole thing is completely moral, in the sense that uh, never in the history of any country has there been such a big slice of the electorate coming from outside. I think in the UK and the United States, where this is allowed, it's done to a very small extent, maybe 1% of the vote. The opposition leader, Chetty Jagan. They have no connection with Guyana, save that they may have been born here. They don't live here, they don't pay any taxes here, they don't even know what's going on in Guyana. And the fact of the matter is that the foreign vote is likely to decide the electoral results at this election. In other words, who will be the government of Guyana? This whole thing is, is immoral. This is just another of the gimmicks being used by the opposition. At first they said we would not hold elections. Then secondly... Forbes Burnham. Prime Minister. They said we would use voting machines. Now voting machines have not been used. They've got to find another gimmick, and the gimmick now is the overseas vote, which is something that is provided for under the Constitution. I'm not in any way concerned about that. And I give politicians who are losing uh, the right to find gimmicks. This is a pretty serious gimmick in one sense, because unless I'm wrong, there are 67,000 foreign voters not that foreign forms. voters, uh, Guyanese resident overseas entitled to vote under the Constitution. Okay, fair enough. 67,000 people have been registered overseas. They are eligible to vote in this election. This forms one-sixth of your electorate. Now, is it fair that a sixth of your possible total electorate should be living overseas? There's no question of fairness. In the last American elections, over three million people overseas voted. It's a question of your constitution. If your constitution permits your residents overseas to vote, they are entitled to vote. What is all this nonsense about fairness? Can the constitution be unfair? If the government cannot win a fair election at home, has to resort to fraud, overseas voting, for instance, another turn comes around, it cannot even win by that kind of fraud, and therefore it has to impose a military dictatorship. Elections aren't elections unless they're free. As a matter of fact, perhaps it's somewhat tautologous to speak of free elections. Many people have told me that this election is completely rigged. Sure, they will say that. Did they say that we were going to use voting machines? Did they say that we weren't going to have elections? Now, you must pull a rabbit out of the hat every time. Is this really just a rabbit? It is a rabbit so far as I am concerned. Bonham has the makings of another Hitler in Guyana. And under American backing, they have propped him, they have put him there, and they're going to prop him up there. And this is dangerous for Guyana. For the people of Guyana, not only the people, we see the same kind of thing, what is it led to in Vietnam.
Do what do you think of Dr. Jagan? A communist. More of a communist even than Tito, because while Tito objected to the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia, as also did the Western Communist parties, he justified it. Can you give me any idea of what you think about him personally? A very charming person, but a most incompetent administrator. Do you think he's fit to rule this country, to govern this country? The electorate didn't think so in 64, and I have good reason to believe they wouldn't think so in 68 either. British housewives were surprised by the thought of non-existent Guyanese at their address. But in Guyana, the opposition parties are afraid. They say the election is not properly safeguarded against manipulation and fear the missing voters might pop up in the ballot box next Monday. Mr. Joe Hughes is one of the Guyanese officials handling the election in Britain. Between April and July, he says he was solely responsible for registering the names of all Guyanese living in Wolverhampton. Mr. Hughes and officials for other areas were hand-picked by the Guyana High Commission in London. Their job was to find all Guyanese in their areas and get positive proof of their right to vote. The man in charge was the High Commission's first secretary, Mr. Patrick Tierans, chief registration officer for the whole of Britain. To find out just how well the operation was controlled, our reporter cross-examined Mr. Hughes in detail about his work as an election officer in Wolverhampton and the results. I belong to Bonaparte, you know. Would you consider yourself a party activist? No, I can't be. You see, once I took the oath, you know, it might be bad for my party that I took an oath to do a job which I can't help the party, but I can't be an activist, you know. I can't be an activist while I was doing this registration business. How many did you enroll in Wolverhampton? Forty-one guys. This is the sum total of the, yes. the Guyanese in Wolverhampton, yes. Yes. as far as you know. Yes. The official list claims that there are, in fact, over 220 people who are eligible to vote in Wolverhampton. Oh, this isn't true. Well, I have the official list. Oh, well, this isn't true. There are 225 people this, on this list. This isn't true. This isn't true on Wolverhampton. This isn't true. Huh. This I've isn't counted true. them up personally. Yes, yeah, so who gave you that list, you know? Well, this is an official list which is published. Given by? Given by a party to us. By a party? By a party. Well, I don't know this. But these are the official lists which are used by all parties. For, for It's an official government list. Yeah. I don't know this. Now, frankly, I, I, I'd like to, to know more of this. Who, who, who would give you this information, and I'd like to see it also, you know. But it is an official printed list, which is available to anyone to see and inspect. And to see it, more than 200 Guyanese in Wolverhampton? Well, I'll have to look at it, you know. I don't know, honestly, I don't know, so I'll have to look at this. If a party tells you that a party might say that, now, you know, if, if an agent does that, he's liable to prosecution, you think I would be? You think I would do that, be liable for prosecution, and at the time when now I'm trying to finish bar exams to do that and finish my own career, I wouldn't be so daft. Last week, World in Action reporters invited the Guyana High Commissioner in London to explain the discrepancies in the lists of voters. The Commissioner is Sir Lionel Lucku, QC, CBE. He's ballot officer for Britain. He was unable to appear. But back in Guyana, his Prime Minister Forbes Burnham had no qualms about the overseas vote. Going back to the foreign voters, would you agree with a figure of just over 43,000 foreign registrants in Great Britain? It is not for me to agree or disagree. It is a matter of what comes out in the register under the processes set up by law. And you are satisfied that these processes which were set up by law are... Have been carried out. And are you satisfied that they were carried out accurately, efficiently, and that they are completely valid? So far as I am aware, yes. You are sure about this? So far as I am aware. You don't expect me to account for every single person all over the world, do you? Are you 100% satisfied that the electoral process, the setting up of the election, has been completely impartial? I am. Could you repeat that and amplify it? What have I got to amplify? As Prime Minister, I say that I am satisfied that the electoral process was impartial. 
Seven days ago, Mr. Burnham again reasserted that the lists of Guyanese voters in Britain were genuine. That is not true. Most of them are fakes. And the scale of the discrepancies indicates something more sinister than incompetence. Voting in Britain ends today, and later this week, Sir Lionel should fly home and cast the votes of Guyanese in Britain. We wonder whether our vanishing voters will reappear in the ballot boxes of Georgetown. <laughs>